What's up everybody? Um, I just wanted to make a quick little video about the first portion of the night I went through last night because I was under attack again um, and I think this will be useful to share this information because this is the type of stuff that people don't want to talk about and it's not a video to scare anybody it's just to show a certain side of things that others aren't really aware of and those that, that have been through it um, you know, they maybe don't want to deal with it or they think it's some sort of game. But when it comes to out-of-body experiences and getting lucid in a state of being on, other than your physical self or however you want to call it, um, there's a lot of aspects going on. There's light environments you can end up in. There's dark gray environments you can end up in. And overall... Um, it's up to the individual what they want to experience. But if you're only wanting to experience like benevolent good things like and never experience the other side of things, to me, you're kind of missing out on part of your true self a little bit. But that's just my opinion. And I'm not saying everybody should be on this path right now and worrying about that. I'm saying this is where I'm at and I'm sharing this stuff right now because it happens to me almost daily and nightly. And I know it helps a lot of people. So, basically, um, at the start of the night, I laid down very early. And I got some sleep. And by the time I woke up, my first wake up in the night, I missed a conscious transition. But when I woke up, I was in essence form. And I did my reality checks. Pinched my arm, check for pain. No pain. Um, just pressure, strong feeling, like a tight... Almost like when you have no nerves on your skin. You pinch your skin as hard as you can. You can feel the really hard pressure building and heavy pressure on the area, but it's not painful. That's one of my reality checks. I did that, pretty much confirmed I'm out of body. I also try to stay as still as possible and wiggle around in essence a little bit. I do that by not moving my muscles at all, just staying completely still as possible and see if I can feel anything moving or swaying left and right, up and down, whatever. So those are my two reality checks, and that was good enough for me just to jump out of the bed um, with my body. Um, even though I was out of body, I was also in another vessel. So I just got out of the bed, and, and that's usually what I do. Sorry, I'm forgetting. Last night, the very first thing that happened, once I got lucid... Um, I got, I got my essence dropped out of the bed. Yeah, this, this is the very first thing that happened. So I get lucid in the bed and then my essence just dropped out of the bed and started free falling in a dark grayish, pretty much dark. And there was some light around, but it was like blotchy lights and I could tell there were beings and I started to fall and I knew that I could let myself fall for a really long time if I wanted to, but I did a move where I spread my arms and legs out and I sort of stopped myself from falling. And then when I did that, I noticed like beings all around me. Um, but it was hard to make out their images. I could just see light beings. And also, as soon as I noticed them and went to make my next move, I think one of them jumped me and I ended up back in the bed. So... When that happens, I'm pretty sure what's happening is those beings that were separate at the time, when they cling on to you and you get brought back to the bed, you are together. So we were separated and then we got brought back and then we're one. So two beings become one, but it was multiple beings that became one. And I was still the primary um, individual controlling the vessel. And I'm not saying controlling, I'm just saying I was moving around naturally. So then those beings were with me after that. So then basically what happened after that, flip back to bed and then I'm in a light environment and I encounter a being that's happy to see me. I'm happy to see them. But as soon as I turn my back, um, as soon as I turn my back, um, I think they did something to put me, either put me, either they were trying to attack me for one or put me in a scenario that they needed help in. I'm not really worried about that first encounter as much. Um, 
So I turned my back after we greet each other and I flip back to bed again. And then from here I have three or four sequences in dark gray-ish environments where it's harder to see, harder to move around, um, things like that. Because there's other beings in the environment that probably shouldn't be there. Um, I'm sorry, definitely shouldn't be there because it's my house that I'm in personally. So they definitely shouldn't be there. Um, and the first one was a woman. I could tell. I could sense that it was a woman. And I'm of the belief that these are people that we live on Earth playing with right now. Earth 2023, there's people that are living here, that know how to project, and they're bothering people like me every night who get the rest they need and then want to be in essence and have an exper out-of-body experiences like that. They're, they're messing with people like that. And... They literally live on the same plane as us. So they're making decisions for us about our souls. Uh, very poor decisions too. And they're trying to keep certain people from connecting to other certain people. And it's just gone way out of hand and ridiculous. So basically, I encounter that woman. And I find her. And I go to grab her. And I'm pretty sure I've had this woman... Uh, in my grasp before and I let her go free because I could tell she was very scared uh, at what I was about to do to her and so I let her go free and I felt pity and guilt for and I didn't feel guilt I felt pity for her so I let her go but clearly that was a mistake by me because she's still coming around and she tried to pull out a weapon and slit my throat and I was able to avoid that, combat that, and we grabbed her, and then we blipped back to bed. So there's where the two separate beings become one again. So then another sequence, I'm completely lucid. All these blips are happening quick, so I'm able to maintain my lucidity. And so I'm back in the bed again. I get back out of the bed. This time I go into my computer room. And my computer room has my computer in it and my screen. And I'm thinking... Even though in my past, when I'm lucid, I want to just go outside and fly above the sky and do that stuff and go up as high as I can, go down as low as I can, uh, run as fast as I can, stuff like that. Just be in essence. This time I wanted to play games because um, I know there's a lot of uh, interesting things you can do with the screens out there. And I was trying to set my computer up to play a game. Excuse me. So this is where I start to sense um, a being in the living room. And while I'm trying to set up my computer, they spawn in in my living room. And um, also to attest to the realness of all this stuff, when I was trying to get my computer working, first off, I was just using my trying to use my imagination. I know you don't need cords out there. You don't need... To plug everything in for it to work. I was just using my imagination. So I just pressed my button on my computer knowing it'll fire up. But it started to work and then it stopped. Almost like it didn't have enough energy to start up on its own. And Or it could have also been that this being in the living room was messing with it to turn it off. Or he absorbed, probably absorbed its energy um, every time I tried to turn it on. So then I sensed that the being... I try to turn the screen on too, and that won't turn on, and it's annoyed. I'm annoyed because I'm like, man, I was just I was about to close the door and just sit down and play games, and this being shows up and messes up my good time again. And I don't care that it's dark environments and all like that. So they're standing out in the hallway. I turn around, and they're not there at first, and then I turn around again, and they're there, and they're standing in the hallway. And completely dark uh, essence um, being a little bit of light within and on the aura, but most of it is dark. And I just want to say dark and light doesn't necessarily mean malevolent and benevolent. It's not evil versus good. It's more about the primary user and their intent behind their essence and their decisions. 
pretty sure I know who this person was. It was a man. Not going to use their surname and expose them like this. That's not a good idea. But they know who they are. I know who they are. And if they keep trying to get away with this, they were already warned a bunch of times that it's not, it's not smart at all to do to mess with me like this. So, or me, sorry, not me to mess with anybody like this. Um, so then they're in the hallway, and I basically look. They're they're not there. Look back again, and they're there. So I walk up to confront them, and then boom, another blip happens. Not sure, not remembering correctly if I was going in to grab them or if I was just going to run up and stare at them face to face. I'm pretty sure that's what I was going to do, just confront them. But quick blip and then we're back into bed. So probably the two beings become one again. And just a quick side note, um, throughout this whole thing, when I'm walking around my house or jumping through the ceiling or whatever, or falling through the floor, confronting that woman. After that, I had some question, something trying to make me question if I was really lucid or not and really out of body or not because everything felt super physical. But I was able to overpower their will with my own will and no, in my heart, K-N-O-Y, I was out of body even though everything felt physical. So there was a few moments where they tried to get me to question my lucidity and my environment that I'm in. So good good win for me there to combat that uh, mind control that they tried on me. And so we get brought back to the bed and I'm pissed off because I wanted to play games and that person messed up my what I wanted to do. It's my decision what I wanted to do. It's my house. They weren't supposed to be there at all. They know it. They messed it up. That's just ridiculous that that happened again after they've been warned so many times just to just walk away. That's all you have to do, bro. Walk away. It's not that complicated. Next thing that happened was brought back to the bed again. This time, I just shoot up off the bed jump on my bed, pounce up through the ceiling, and I go up probably 10 to 20 stories before fizzling out. And, sorry, probably 8 to 15 stories before I just fizzle out and I see light above me. I see a platform, um, like a straight platform, and I'm just floating there, and I know I need to get up back on, on that platform as my, as my last, uh, what I wanted to do. So I did a little trick where I uh, flipped myself upside down, or I was already flipped upside down, and I just put my feet on the ledge, and I used my essence to pull the rest of my body up. And there was a being that I could see on the ledge before I pulled myself up, but it didn't stop me from doing that. And the being um, connected with me again. We touched, and we got brought to back to the bed for the last time. And that was it for the sequence of battles. And that last being, become, we become one, and then we all get brought back to physical. And I'm sitting there all sweaty and uh, worked up or whatever because I just had an intense battle against four to ten different beings trying to attack me at different times. So that was pretty much it, what I wanted to share. I document this stuff because nobody talks about this stuff. And these are the beings that are doing it to a lot of people. And they know that I'm like their biggest threat. So they always come after me when I'm vibing. I had a whole boatload of experiences after that. Which the whole message for the night for me was to slow down a little bit. There's a few important things you're missing, but you're doing good. And that was kind of like the feeling I got. Um, and there was a decision I made that I really didn't like walking away from someone I really love. But Sorry for the quick little cut. What I was saying is there's no excuse why I walked away. The reason I was walking away was I was in more battle mode or due to the first portion of the night and experience that, that happened. And... Because of that, that's the mode I was in, more so in warrior mode, just going 
and trying to keep my momentum going. So I'm very sorry for walking away and making it, you feel like um, I didn't love you or something in that moment, but I always do. And sorry for the quick little cut. There's gonna be one more and then wrap up the video. Sorry for that quick little abrupt cut. Um, what I was saying was I'm just getting my momentum back these past two nights and basically um, I'm, I got put in a situation where I wanted to do one thing but I was just going going so I started to do just go do another thing so I walked away from someone that I didn't want to walk away from at all that's someone I wanted to be um, having experiences with like very frequently and the way it made it appear to him was that I was walking away from him because I didn't like him or something but the truth is, if I could do it again, I would have grabbed his hand and take him with me. So that's where I'll leave it. And um, after that, I had some other interesting experiences, still lucid, some lucidity drop, things like that. But obviously, if I could take back one thing from that night was I would have grabbed that loved one's hand and I would have taken him with me instead of leaving him there. And... That's my fault for not slowing down. And the message of my night is that I do need to slow down a little bit here and there. Um, it's hard. It was hard for me to slow down last night because, like I said, I'm just building my momentum back up. And it's been a few months, a couple months, good months, where I haven't really been getting into my practices as much and getting lucid as much and having as much experiences. So I'm just getting back in tune with that side of me a little bit. Um, so I'm not going to make the perfect decisions all the time.